am doing Audrey's five month update today in this video, right? Is that what we're doing? Yay! Those of you who follow the vlog channel I have with my husband, um, and if you don't, uh, links below, go ahead and subscribe to that channel. Um, those of you who do follow those videos know that we just moved to LA from Kansas City, so it was a really busy time and that's why I wasn't able to do the four month update. So there's a three month update and then now we're doing the five month. I was going to try to combine them, but I just thought, nah, we'll just skip that. We'll just go ahead and start with the five month. So here's what's new. Um, Audrey turned five months on Sunday, so uh, November 10th. She turned five months, and yeah, she's just, it's amazing the difference. I'm sure if you guys go back and watch the three month, especially since I didn't do a four month, there's like a huge difference in just how she looks. Um, how much more hair she has. It's crazy how just a few months can make the biggest difference. Like she's almost just like a different baby now. Um, okay, so let's get into it. I'll start with uh, sleeping. Sleeping wise, we're still pretty much on the same schedule. She goes to bed around seven. I'd like to move that back a little bit, but she still just gets really tired and she's just ready to go to bed by that time. So, um, that's the time she goes to bed and actually she's done really well with the time change um, just real quick to talk about that LA time is two hours behind Kansas City time and so you know she obviously had to get adjusted to that but she's adjusted and she's done really well with it so she goes to bed between 7 and 7 30 she still wakes up once in the middle of the night to eat um, now her pediatrician did say at her four month appointment that a lot of times breastfed babies um, we'll still need to eat at least once at night we'll, we'll still need to eat pretty much only once at night um, until they're about six months, and then a lot of times they'll drop that feeding on their own. So, I feel like she still needs it. Um, she's, the pedi my pediatrician said that a lot of times you'll know when they don't need it is if you get them up and they cry and, they, and you feed them and they fall asleep right away, then you'll kind of know that mm, they probably don't really need it, they're just kind of nursing just because. But when she wakes up and I feed her, she like drinks like hardcore like she's hungry. So I'm okay with that, she wakes up between Mm, two and four usually and she'll she'll nurse and then she'll go right back to sleep I mean she doesn't cry or anything so that's I'm okay with that so she does that and then she'll usually wake up between 6 30 and 7 30 in the morning I also would love that to be pushed back a little bit but I think because she goes to bed so early that's just kind of when she wakes up so I'm sure in the next month or so that's going to shift and she'll stay up a little later hopefully she'll wake up a little later but that's what it is as of right now um so that's going really well sleeping is pretty good um she sometimes will wake up between 10 and 11 and just kind of cry and being the mom that I am I you know started going in and trying to put her passy back in and trying to comfort her and really I just need to leave her her pediatrician also said the same thing um you know she doesn't need to eat at 11 she had just had a feeding before she went to bed she's fine and so um really and I know that people have different views on it but really just kind of leaving her and letting her work it out on her own is the best way. And I really have realized that I make it worse when I go in because she doesn't even really want me. She's just tired and she just is like, she wakes up and she just needs to go back to sleep. And if I go in, it actually makes it worse. So I'm working on that, just kind of letting her cry it out a little bit. She's usually fine. She usually only cries for like 10 minutes or so. And then she goes right back to sleep. So, and that's if she, sometimes she doesn't even do that. Like sometimes she'll just go back down at 730, sleep all the way till that two or three feeding and then she's good. So. Yeah. Okay, so feeding. Um, she's still nursing uh, about six times a day. She nurses. And um, we recently introduced cereal. Um, her pediatrician said that between, obviously, between four and six months, you can introduce solids. And she said sometimes four months is a little early. And she said sometimes six months, all babies are different, but sometimes six months is... Um, a little late just because they almost aren't interested anymore sometimes if you wait. Like I said before, all babies are different. This is just what we do with Audrey. You might do something different with your kids, so they're all different. But for her, we decided to start cereal at five months. So we introduced cereal, and um, yet again, if you don't follow our vlog channel, you should go ahead and follow that because we actually filmed the first time when we um, gave her the cereal, and it was a really cute reaction. So. Um, a lot of times baby have, babies have a reflux um, that when you feed them for the first time they actually push the food out and it's just a reflex, not reflux, reflex. Hi! Are you watching mommy? Um, it's a reflex. So a lot of times people will, will think, oh they don't like it because they're pushing it out and really it's just them getting used to having a spoon in their mouth and food, like they've just, they're used to sucking, they're not used to like 
eating. So you just kind of have to keep trying with it. It doesn't necessarily mean that they don't like it. It just means that they're just getting used to it. So every day we do cereal, and I do like a tiny, tiny bit. I do rice cereal. I do like a little bit with, mixed with breast milk, and it's just tiny bit. And I don't even make her finish all of it. I just basically do it to get her used to it and get her try it, to try it. And she doesn't, I don't think, really like the taste of it, which I don't blame her. It's kind of a bland flavor. But the reason why I haven't started mixing it um, with anything, a lot of people suggest it when they saw the vlog, um, oh, mix it with something else. The reason why I haven't started mixing it with like a fruit or anything is because you want to give them a few days um, of just one food before you try new food. So it's usually like the three to four day rule where you give them one food to make sure they're not allergic to it or to make sure that they don't have a reaction. If you start mixing things right away, um, and, and they have like a reaction to it, then it's really hard to tell what they're allergic to because it could be the cereal or it could be the fruit you mixed it with. So that's the only reason why. Pew! Did you go poopy? Ew! Oh my goodness. Um, someone pooped. Anyway. <laughs> so this week we're just doing a little cereal and then probably next week I might start mixing in a little uh, either a sweet potato or fruit or something. I don't know. I'm planning to make her baby food myself. I have, I, I registered for a, it's called the Baby Biba. It's a baby, it's a food steamer and puree all in one. So I'll be sure to show you guys when I start doing that, but it's really easy. Um, I've used it before because I nannied for a while and the people I nannied for had one and I made baby food for their daughter and it's really easy and I love it. That's why I registered for it. You basically just put the food in and it steams it and then you just puree it all in one and it's super easy. So I'm planning to just make all of her stuff and um, it's it's cheaper obviously and it tastes a little bit better because it doesn't have all the added stuff that the baby food has. Not that it's bad to give your baby the jar baby food, um, but I just figure why not make it if it's easy and it's cheaper. So. I will probably start with maybe a little sweet potato or, um, I know there's different rules on if you should start with a veggie or a fruit. Her pediatrician actually said, her view on it is it doesn't really matter. You can start with a fruit or a veggie, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm not sure what I'll start. I might start pear or apple or whatever. But whatever I do start, I'm going to do the same rule like what I did with the cereal where I'll do three or four days of just that one fruit or vegetable just to make sure that she is allergic to it. So anyway, sorry for that long spiel. but. Yes, so feeding wise, she's still nursing really well, um, and then we just start at cereal a little bit, right? And she likes sitting in her high chair a lot. She loves that whole experience of, you know, sitting in her high chair. Uh, the cereal, she's still not real sure on, so we're just going to keep trying. And like I said, this is just trying experimenting. It's not like, like her sole nutrient still comes from breastfeeding. So it's not like we're starting solids to kind of like switch out. Like we're just starting solids so that she can get used to it, but... For the next several months, like her sole nutrients is still gonna be breast milk. So anyway, that's that, right? Playing it wise and just some of the new skills. Oh, it's crazy how a few months can make such a big difference. So I think in our three month update, I talked about her rolling. She started rolling over. She's been rolling over for a long time, but now the main difference, and she actually started this at four months. Um, she started rolling to get places. So she can get around just by rolling. And yet again, if you don't follow our vlog channel, you should because there's videos of her rolling in that. So it's really cute. So a lot of times I'll put her on her little play mat, but she'll roll off of that. So I really have to watch her and make sure that she's not around anything that she can get hurt from because she gets around really quick from rolling. She's also started partially sitting up by herself. Like if I sit behind her and kind of hold her up and then let go for a few seconds, she can kind of sit up, not straight, like she kind of hunches over. Um, and so that's something new. Did you drop your little flower? Here it is. Um, she's another new thing is she's uh, seriously started laughing now, like hardcore laughing now. Austin, my husband, is the only one that can get her to do that. Lame, right? She's extremely drooly and extremely bitey, but she's yet again been like that for a really long time. So I don't know that that necessarily means she's teething. I mean, I know that they usually tease between this time. I haven't noticed anything in her coming out of her gums yet. It's still just gums. So I don't know. She is extremely drooly and she loves biting on everything. But like I said, she's been like that for a long time. She is more verbal now too. I'm trying to think of all the new things because it's like normal when you see it every day. But then I'm like, oh wait, maybe that's not. I mean, she hasn't always been doing that. But yeah, she's a lot more verbal. Um, she's really into her tongue. She loves to stick her tongue out. She also loves to try to pull raspberries. She hasn't figured out how to do that yet. So she'll just go. That's really funny. Well, it's funny to me. <laughs> oh, weight and height. I didn't talk about that. 
Um, she hasn't been to the doctor since her four-month appointment, so that was obviously a month ago. You know, they go at four, two months, four months. Her next appointment will be when she's six months. But when a month ago, at her four-month appointment, she was 14.6 pounds, and she was 26 inches long. So she's actually she actually dropped a little in her weight percentile. I think she was 75th. And then her height went up again. She's, I don't know if she's going to be tall like her dad or what. She's actually in the 96th percentile for height. So she's long. She's a long baby. But that, like I said, that was a month ago. So I'm not exactly sure what she is now because I don't really weigh her, you know. So she's probably weighs more than that and she might be a little longer. Her, her pants are starting to get short again and um, some of her outfits are getting small again. She's actually been in six month clothing for a while, so. Girl, you a big girl. She's super distractible. <laughs> That's been really interesting. Um, I used to be able to feed her out a lot more easily. I obviously had my nursing cover, but now it's really hard to feed her when we're out because I'll have my nursing cover on and she'll she's really distractible, so she'll like move her head, but then she'll like grab my nursing cover. There have been a couple times that she like grabbed it and almost like completely exposed me, and it's almost kind of a disaster. So I need to figure if you. Comment below if you have suggestions on when you're out and, you, and you're feeding your baby with a nursing cover and they get really distracted, like any ideas of what I can do. Because obviously I can't just stay in the house and like just feed her in the house. I mean, there, there's times we're out running errands and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just bring a bottle of breast milk because it's just easier to feed her with a bottle. So I'll just bring a bottle of breast milk for her and just do that. But sometimes I don't always want to do that. Sometimes I just want to be able to nurse her when we're out without worrying about like struggling with the nursing cover and her like turning her head away and then pulling my nursing cover and maybe it's just her or maybe it's just me maybe i'm just awkward i don't know comment below if you have any suggestions on what to do when you're nursing out on anything that maybe you do with your baby to keep them from being so distracted i don't know <laughs> but anyway that's our five month update you guys thanks so much for watching um comment below for video ideas i plan on doing well, just to give you guys a little rundown, on uh, Monday and Fridays, I'm going to have a new video up. So this Monday, you guys, have, there was the outfit of the day. If you haven't seen that, check it out. And then Friday, I this video obviously is up, and, um, and then Monday will be a new video. And so I kind of want to do a mix of beauty stuff, mommy stuff, do-it-yourself stuff. So comment below on maybe a few ideas of what you guys want to see, or tweet me. Um, follow me on Twitter, at Britnoll, and you guys can tweet me ideas of videos that maybe you'd like to see. And yeah, I love suggestions. We love suggestions, don't we? She's not paying attention, sorry. But um, yeah, so thanks for watching, you guys, and have a lovely weekend. Subscribe if you like my videos. I put up videos on Monday and Fridays. Follow me on Twitter at Britt Null and also check out my vlog channel I do with my husband. 